popping? What's popping? Yurts. We are Yurts. here for Women's History Month, and we are so excited. To be here with us. Some behind the scenes craziness going on, <laughs> which I am absolutely loving. Hi, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We have Paul Duncan, master moderator, hanging out with us in the comments. So if you have any questions or you don't put a cue in front of your question, he's the one that's going to call you out so we don't miss anything. Feel free to drop those questions in, drop those, um, any questions, any comments, any, any chatter that you want to drop in. The links um, will be in the description and the comments are going to be popping. We're so happy that you're here. We're going to be talking all about women in tech with some pretty incredible special guests. So let's jump in. <laughs> I wanted to start by sharing some just like staggering statistics. I'm going to hold here for just a second so that you can read through some of these with me because it is just absolutely insane. Women hold less than 27% of tech-related jobs and the numbers thin out the higher up the chain you climb. 54% of women say that the pandemic is making it harder for them to break into the tech industry. 22% of us are more than likely to experience imposter syndrome in the workplace. Only 48% are in STEM jobs and they report discrimination in the recruitment and hiring process. 72% of us that are in tech report being outnumbered by men in business meetings by a ratio of at least two to one. We have lower salaries and a harder time getting loans. It's a little upsetting out there, so we're gonna talk about it tonight. So excited to be here with the incredible India. We have Nikki in the house, Mary Lou and Evie. Thank you so much for making time for us tonight. You're what's cracking, fam? What's happening? Ah, <laughs> man. Okay, you know that I'm going to be grabbing sound effects from all of this and using them in all of my future streams. <laughs> Everyone's amazing. Hey, amazing voice. Let's do it. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Paul, and Paul's saying, Women got men to the moon. True, we're here. We're here to talk about it tonight. I have all of the questions, but before we dive in, um, a little bit of housekeeping. So, again, if you want to ask a question, we welcome questions, throw a cue and a colon in front of it so it's easy for us to find. So definitely drop those in. And tonight, um, as well as all of our live streams for the month of March, we are supporting Creators for Ukraine. So all of the funds that we raise during all of these live streams, so if you hit that donate button and you donate um, to that cause, it is going to a bunch of vetted uh, charities that are helping to support those in Ukraine. So if you feel so inclined, help us. We're trying to get to at least $1,000. We're pretty close. So, you know, just saying. <laughs> you can help some people out. But yeah, let's uh, let us jump in. I would love for each of you to just give a brief description of who you are and what you're doing. Let's start with India. What's cracking, fam? I'm India Delgado, the only India Delgado on YouTube. And you guys know me because this is what we do. Born and raised in Brooklyn. And if you're from New York, see, Nikki already knows. Talk about it. Talk about right. it. Yeah, and you're going to lean back. Yeah. We are East Coast, That's West Coast yeah. tonight, and I'm loving it. Exactly. <laughs> see, Mary Lou did it perfectly. Do that one more time, Mary Lou. Do it one more time. Yeah. Yeah. There, you there you go. There you go. Talk about um, it. I am a banker by day, live streamer by night. So I hold, so now I'm in my bank attire because I rushed and I feel out of place. I'm all suited no, up and y'all are all chilling. Right, like, I'm be. like, okay, no, definitely out of place. Yeah. You want me to right, go grab yeah. my business jacket? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like Make me feel at home. Um, and I mean, I just simplify tech. I am a teacher, I guess. I love teaching financial literacy. And I bring that over into the live streaming world with simplifying the process as best as possible, making it relatable and having fun with you guys. What's cracking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome. Welcome to the stream. We cannot wait to dive in. Nikki, over to you. Uh, I'm Nikki. I'm a kid <laughs> from Queens. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I got a podcast, Nikki and Moose, the podcast. Uh, I'm a, I say I'm a, I'm a super dope content creator <laughs> as well agree. over, yeah, over in are. Instagram land. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like over yeah, in Instagram yeah. land, I'm over there. Uh, but yeah. the big thing is I help people really figure out their personal brands through content. And so I give out tips about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I give out social media tips all day. Um, <laughs> I love creating. So that's just, just me. Just a kid from Queens who just happens to be into uh, social media. You feel me? 
<laughs> I That's absolutely me. like it. Love it. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Mary Lou, over to you. Hey, I'm Mary Lou Mantle. I make content about making content. So Whoop. much like uh, all of us here, you know, we're like trying to help you guys out in uh, being content creators. I had somebody recently say that I like give internet cheap cheat codes. <laughs> mm, I was like, achievement very, level unlocked. <laughs> it's a very concise uh, description of what I do. But uh, yeah, so I have like my YouTube channel is just like all tutorials. And then I'm doing like shorter, quicker tutorials on the other platforms where people don't have patience to hear you talk about things. <laughs> Eight seconds yeah. or less and go. <laughs> and I make here. it happen. <laughs> I don't it. know every how, day. but you do. All day, every day. I love it. Over to you, Evie. <laughs> Hey everybody, I am Yvonne Hyman with Ask Evie and I am a business efficiency consultant. So I take care of all the automation and processes behind the scenes so you can scale your content. <laughs> if there's a crew that was can get we, it Did someone done. record that? <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, we'll send it to you afterwards. We're all about efficiency here. We've learned from right. the best. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you for the kind comments and welcome, welcome to everyone. I, I, yeah, I'm just so excited to be here. And I, when I was thinking through like what, you know, it's hilarious. Caleb, Caleb was like, we should do a women's history month live stream. And of course, because we've been yeah. at social media marketing world and all over the place, we are literally like right up against the end of this month. And I wanted I wanted to talk specifically about women in tech because, and this is my first question out to all the group. We could do it as a raise hand kind of question if we're uh -oh. up for it, but uh -oh. uh, how many of you would consider yourselves to be women in tech? <laughs> for the so what's funny to me is that when I was like looking through this and thinking through different topics, I would not have come anywhere close to considering what I do in to be anywhere near technology. I've spent most of my career in, you know, in copywriting. I'm an English literature major. I like really good at reading books <laughs> and writing. And then now, you know, and in this space where, you know, working in video production, working in social media marketing and all of that is technology, but I think so many of us don't think about it that way or don't approach it that way or like, oh no, that's other people doing, you know, doing amazing things in that space. But here we all are. And Mary Lou is owning it. <laughs> but here we all are right. in, that, like... in that space, right? And so I think sometimes, particularly as women, we sort of find our find our place and our career paths are a little bit less traditional than some of our male counterparts who have in many cases this very like direct path from A to Z of what they, you know, what they want to accomplish and where they want to be. So I guess my first question, and we can start with you, India, is how did you end up in this space? So I know you're a banker Ooh. by day, yeah. content creator by night. What what about it, you know, interested you? Was it in it was it in the kind of technology place was it the content creation side how did you yeah. how did you end up wanting to get in front of in front of people in the world of video how did that start um so i've always been a nerd i mean all of us here right we're all nerds on our own different level whatever we're nerding, I, that should have been my question I like, how many people think that we're right? nerds <laughs> right how much of a nerd are you right yeah. um so i've always been a nerd and so with tech i used to work in radio shack back in the day right so like for those of you guys that are nerds it was like that was the best job ever because I got all the technology yeah. before all of you guys got it. So it was like, listen, you might have seen an open box. That was because I tried that first. <laughs> That's a reality. Yeah. Um, and so technology has always been, i have that's just my thing. Like we're talking about Palm Pilots, like the hand spring PDAs. Like I've always <laughs> loved, I took it back, right? I took it way back. Yeah. Oh um, <laughs> remember that? Um, yeah, do. So I've always, Sad. I've always been a level, a lover of tech and then how, and I've always, I've always been a coach. So whether it's been like with leading and managing people, I've always loved coaching people. <laughs> I've always loved simplifying processes or how the Canadians say it, processes, processes, processes. processes. right, exactly. <laughs> um, and so how that all came together now with being in tech and in content creation was with the pandemic. So as a banker, I was doing financial literacy in person. So in libraries and in, you know, nonprofit agencies and our corporate responsibility 
to give back to the communities didn't stop just because the pandemic occurred. So it became a thing of, okay, so how do I pivot? How do I, because I'm all about, listen, I need to stand out, right? That, if you know me, you know, like I'm going to stand out. So when we went virtual, I wasn't trying to be like every other banker or just giving a boring Zoom session and Ecamm for the win, hello. And so Ecamm came in, it showed me how to, from a banker's perspective, really no other banker is doing what I do, like hands down, no other banker is doing what I do. And then I started meeting the community and it was like Doc and Lemuel and Bradley Vincent and Diana. And then it was like, okay, wait, there's more to it than this. And how I genuinely started was Doc was like, yo, Ayo ma, ayo, you know, for those of you guys that know Doc Rock, ayo ma. Good impression. Ayo. I like it. Right. You guys, you have to come on my live stream on Saturday morning. You got it. You, you mad cool. You family. You my little sister. And I was like, uh, yeah. And that was um, Doc and I had our very first conversation November 6th in 2020. And that was all she wrote. That was it. And mm. I, here we are. That was it. <laughs> So thanks I, for knocking you guys. I love it. And I love that, you know, from just that push and you, you know, you're one of those people who are constantly doing, you know, challenges and, and forcing yourself to try out all of the gear to play around with things. You have a new um, masterclass that you just launched, a link yep. in the description if you're interested, all about the stream deck. So if you're if you're, exactly. if you're like, what is this magic? I'm trying not to drop my, my stream deck. Right. Um, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really awesome to kind of to jump in in with with both feet into that area because I do think you know one of the one of the stats that um, that I found and that I read off at the beginning was that 22% of women feel that level of imposter syndrome and are kind of mm -hmm. second guessing themselves or wondering if they're in the right place or you know even when even when they're killing it or feeling like maybe they're not doing the right thing or missing something um so I think it's really great that you you're sort of always pushing yourself to get to get a little bit yeah. better and doing it publicly which I think is what's one of the really cool things about what everyone in this group is doing is that it's not none of us are doing it in a place where we're behind the scenes it's all out in front of everyone else so that everyone is able to see what's possible yeah. and to see where those pain points are or where those points are where it's not perfect or it's not you know completely polished which i think is uh is really neat nikki how about yeah. you where did how did how did you get into where you are i mean social media is one of those things where i feel like it's like so much of it is content but then it is really like it is really techie you need to be able to keep up with yeah. really fast changing trends and be on top of everything yeah. and that can be dicey yeah well i'm a new yorker so exactly <laughs> you're like right. i got no. this um, no imposter <laughs> over here listen listen <laughs> everything goes really fast over there i'm just saying no um real talk uh it happened by accident to be honest with you so um for those who don't no, I work with uh, Dr. Eric Thomas, who is a motivational speaker, and I grew his social media from 300K to 2.1 million to what it is. But that was <laughs> Sorry, I had to give you that. credit there. I had to give you credit. <laughs> but um, like that was by accident. I was just serving in his his online community, and they say, yo, you uh, – you create these little mashup videos. So I was creating content, um, taking his voice and putting it, you know, pairing it up with just B-roll. And they were like, yo, you want to take over his social media? I said, sure, I'm addicted to it. Let's do it, right? Um, and then I realized that I, I was, because I have a short attention span. Like, I'm that squirrel type, like, what, well, okay, what are we doing today, right? Um, and that social media continued to change so quickly, it kept my attention. And as I was growing it, people would continue to ask, like, yo, how'd you do this? How'd you do this? And I'm realizing that people who do behind the scenes stuff for big brands, they don't necessarily have a face. Like, they don't really come out and say, this is how I grew this brand and this is how I grew that brand. So... I was like, you know what? I, I'll be that face. People keep asking me, let me do it more on a larger scale. Um, but I don't necessarily have time to create content on a regular basis because I'm creating over there. So that's how I got into like live. 
So I would go live Monday through Friday on Instagram, which I still do. Um, and it just clicked on that standpoint. And then after that, it was the pandemic hit and people were really trying to figure out, yo, how do I grow my social media? How do I create content? What is happening? I'm like, you're like, I got this. <laughs> I've been doing this for a little bit. Hello, come through. Hello. Um, and so that's pretty much how I got into it. Just by accident yep. and just being a fan and understanding like the role of serving, like mm -hmm. on social media, all my content and all the content that I do for E and that the team does is all based off what can we give the audience. Yeah. And just with no with nothing in return, just here, here's the value. And that's how we grew his brand. And that's why my brand is growing the way it is. So by accident, you feel me? <laughs> Not by accident though. I will say that like a heart of a heart of service and of really thinking through like how can I help people like you were you were noticed because you were there and you weren't just there mm -hmm. in the background learning you were there participating and engaging and being part of a community which I think is so cool kind of ab about this new landscape that we're all in so you know traditionally women are really bad at being like in the, you know, in the back of the room or like just note taking or, you know, working hard mm -hmm. instead of raising your hands and raising our voices and contributing to the conversation. But <laughs> look it, at Evie's leaving right, right. <laughs> Like Evie right now, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I, I think it's, I, I think it's like, it's, it's a really great for everyone that's listening right now to hear that, you know, showing up and being consistent and being part of a community and just giving back without like, without thinking anything may necessarily come of it, women yeah. rock at that. Like not to, not to yeah. generalize, but like yeah. this is our time and our place. Like this is the time where we can, where it's okay for us to just be ourselves and be kind and be, you know, be part of a community and helpful and we can win at that. We can make strides at that and we can show up in a way that is incredibly professional and is visible to everyone if we're willing to put ourselves out there a little bit. So yeah. I mean, by accident, but not by accident. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to let you I, have I that. You you did did there. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Okay. <laughs> you worked at it. You worked at it. Over to you, Mary Lou. So we're, you know, getting into tech. Like, I I was tech since I was a kid. So I actually, like, pulled this up. This is my first <laughs> device. I love it. It's from mm. so the Casio Secret Sender 6000. And oh, I had, like, a friend. Yeah. Of that one, Reach. And yeah. And we each other in class. And I would uh, use this to like, I could sync it up to the TVs in the classrooms. This is like middle school. And I was like changing the channels just to like see if it worked. So Dope. when you're like, are you a woman in tech? Are you a female in tech? I'm like, yes, because I've been nerding out over this stuff like I love forever. It. So I've always been like really obsessed with like, what are new ways we can communicate? What are new ways that we can participate and interact in the world together and separately? Yeah. So, you know, that's why like I've always just been like, I, I need to know what things are. So whenever there's like with social media, I was like, wow, there's like we, we can like just post whatever we want and anybody can see it. Oh, OK, you know, or oh, we can just like <laughs> message in. people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like really interesting to me. And that's always been something that I'm obsessed with. And like it, we, you know, whenever you ask the question, like who considers self, themselves a, a woman in tech, like all of us look around you we are su surrounded by things that plug in right like, right yeah so right. we are literally women in tech yeah we are literally <laughs> surrounded by the tech i know but it's it's yeah. so it is funny though like i i had to even kind of like think to myself a little bit i'm like uh eh, you know sort of yeah. but like you know but i just i've done social media and i do those kinds of things and like you know, just, it started as like fun and as, <laughs> as like a hobby and stuff. So I, it, it's funny, our own like preconceived notions about ourselves. And I, I am definitely guilty of that imposter syndrome time where like, even, even these days where I feel fairly confident, like I, I, I think that I'm awesome and I think I'm doing a great job. I have those moments where like something will creep in or like my standard for what I thought wasn't as good as you know as what I feel like I pulled off or you know or I see someone someone else doing something differently and I'm like oh 
you know, and, um, and there, I think there are certain like categories as well within business, like negotiation is one of those things where like women mm. traditionally are just not great at oh, any of that. Man. And, and I feel like that's that even in itself is a constant battle of like, how do you negotiate? How do you, how do you price yourself to give yourself value? Right. I mean, you, you are all learn. You space. learn the pregnant pause, right? That's it. You learn the pregnant pause, and you just <laughs> like you get your game face on. on. So in the India is nailing the way. Right. Call me later. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Evie, over to you. Yeah, like I've been, I've been pondering this whole women in tech, and if I'm considering myself in tech, with all the what we have been talking about, I'm like, um, yeah, I kind of live with it twenty four seven. I'm even wearing it on my finger, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, no. but I also never considered myself as yeah. a woman in tech because I'm not going all out. I'm not coding. I'm not. I'm not yeah. doing all the fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yet, actually, I am. I'm like looking at the whole building the processes. St Stephanie Lou likes to joke around that I'm her second brain. When she <laughs> di discovers a new tool and she's not sure if she should use it or not, she literally just mentions it to me because I'm going to be digging into that for the next three days and then just give her the short report. So, yeah, I think I am a woman in tech. Actually. <laughs> We've we all, we all know who to go to We've now. We all you. know. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Um, I yeah, I also consider you that. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, OK, I don't I think I I think I've got this but maybe I'm doing this wrong and you're definitely my go-to. I, I feel like my click up is looking much better. You're going to be really proud of me. It's like very it organized. Does. <laughs> it does. But you know, the, the fun thing for me is I'm like, I started, I love India hearing that you um, worked in a store before. I'm like, I started out as an electrician. I'm like, I love building things. I never That's saw incredible. myself sitting in front of a monitor for, mm -hmm. for hours on end. I'm like, yeah, no, not gonna be working on a monitor no but um kind of like nikki just following the yellow brick road and it just mm -hmm. following along what's needed i'm like there are some personal stories behind it how i ended up where i am today but i'm still building things i'm helping people build their business i still get to build processes and i think what what gave the big change in my mind was when I realized that people don't see things like I see them. I literally, and everybody is always joking, I literally walk through my apartment complex every single day and get mad because I see the inefficiencies and how easily they could be fixed. <laughs> I mm. love it. I love it. I, so it's, it's like such follow the yellow brick road. I yep. see this stuff, so let's make something of it. And I'm actually having fun doing it, so why not? Yeah, I... I think that's like, that really is the key. Like if you're able to figure out what it is that you actually enjoy doing, what gives you, you know, that feeling of like, ah, oh, I got this and be able to translate that into a career, into a business, you know, I is just, I feel like it's something that's at the back of most of our heads as we're thinking through what we want to be when we grow up mm -hmm. <laughs> and yet it gets so derailed. And, but I feel like most of us end up where we're supposed to be anyway on that kind of yellow brick road through, <laughs> through all of yeah. the other fun filled places <laughs> until we end up where we're supposed to be. I totally thought that I would be in publishing. That's all I wanted to do was be in publishing. I wanted to write books. I wanted to copy edit books. And then when I got out of school, they were like, copy editing isn't a field anymore. We just fired all of the editors. We have the internet now. We don't need any of those people. <laughs> so, well, then. Right? Yeah. So uh, turns out books do still need to be edited. Just saying. Just saying yes. out there. Yeah. Shout out to yes. the editors so out there. true. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I distinctly remember at, when I first applied for a, a social media job, social media like wasn't really a job but this company a publishing company was looking for a social media marketing manager but they really didn't know like what that meant and so when i submitted my resume they were like they're like well but you know how many years of social media marketing experience do you have and i'm like look i'm not gonna lie to you i'm from canada <laughs> we're not really good at like you know making making things into a scene i'm like no one no one has years of social media marketing experience. It's not a thing. Right. Like I can show you my personal Facebook account, like in <laughs> all the photos of like my dog and my friends and all these things. But there's not, there's not a person out there that's going to be able to show you like 10 years of social media marketing experience. It's not a thing. I can prove it to you. 
And, you know, and it was hilarious because they, they ended up passing on me and went to look for someone mm. else and then came back weeks later and said, we were wrong. We'd love to hire you. And it, it was something mm. that, for, you know, for the longest time, my boss, who's now like a still a very close friend of mine, we would just joke about, she was like, remember that time where we thought, we thought that it wasn't a good idea to bring you on, but it's, it's those moments. <laughs> So we're like, it, right. as a second guesser, I was sitting there being like, maybe I'm an idiot for thinking that like I could break into this field. It, maybe it's too new. Maybe it's too soon. You know, maybe I can't translate my, my writing skills into mm -hmm. this space. But I just told myself, no, I, you know, maybe I can. And maybe it's, it's okay for them to look around to someone else. It'll work out or it won't. But it was worthwhile mm -hmm. to apply for that job. And really, it was that change from kind of in that in that spot of my career that made a big difference. Um, and now it's like laughable because I, you know, there've been definitely within the last five years where I was just like, I'll never be on video. Video is terrifying. And, you know, and, right, and right, here right, I am right. doing it. So I, you know, I think it, I think that that road can get us into different places, but, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's been a, it's been a fun journey of kind of <laughs> second guessing Diana. I know they missed out on the Katie Fox. I, I make fun of her probably on a monthly basis for this and I don't work there anymore. So this is what friends are for, right? <laughs> supporting, right. Supporting each other and all of this. Oh, we have a question from, um, from Gabe. Hey, shout out to Gabe. What do all of you amazing ladies see on the landscape for tech development and advancements that will open up even more opportunities for women to dive into tech? That's a great question. Anyone have thoughts? Want to take it? Nope. Nope. Nikki's like, I know. What? None of us are in tech. So, <laughs> ew. I, so, so well, hold on. So it's weird because it's weird because I was an IT in the Navy. Oh, right? okay. So, Nikki so this is why I don't tech. consider myself tech because I was <laughs> tech. Yeah. Right. So to switch that back and be like, what is the landscape of the future of the development? <laughs> and the, what? No. I don't know. I don't. They're all gonna say no. I know content. So, not, content. I, not I necessarily agree. on the on the landscape of IT, yeah. but what I've been seeing coming back to Stephanie Lou actually is <laughs> seeing she um, Emma, her little one, is actually in a coding camp right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. seeing how from a young age she is what five or six. From that young age on, they not enough, but there are finally more resources out there to to help those kids on an early age. They are learning coding like other people learn a second language. Yep. And at an age of five or six, mm -hmm. building that knowledge. I learned C++ when I was 14 for two years and I never touched it again or <laughs> actually used it. Yeah, yeah. They're learning yeah. serious coding. She came home and had coded a little unicorn that even by pressing of a button said something. And I'm like, where was that when I was five yeah. or six? So building that, that ground knowledge and teaching them from a young age to be there, understand that yeah. language and be able to dive right in when it comes to that time. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely. where I the advantages. Oh, I love this comment. Content will be its own language. Yeah. I, I definitely left, um, social media marketing world. Um, shout out to Nikki who hit the stage there, which was incredible. Um, but so, what, 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 what I heard over and over and over again, granted I was in a lot of YouTube specific sessions, but, um, but was this notion of really following where the creators are going and watching where, you know, where creators are spending their time, what kinds of content they are creating. So again, in this kind of space of people are putting themselves out there and communicating and forming communities and building content in all different kinds of ways and kind of s staying in that space and seeing where those changes are coming and how the various platforms react to that and where, you know, where, where people want to spend their time. I think, you know, we're sort of nearing the end of people putting up with, um, you know, with the Facebooks and the, <laughs> the big kind of yeah. monoliths of the time. I think people want, they want the freedom to be able to build their businesses the way that they want to build it and create content the way that they want to create it and be, and be paid for it. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, being able to yeah. kind of track that, at least in my mind, I think, yeah, and partnered with White Evie, what you said, my kids are both encoding um, as well. And I think 
you know, they, every kid under the age of, I don't know, probably even like 14 or 15, they're all like, they all want to be on YouTube. They all want to be, they all, mm-hmm. they all want like yeah. YouTube yeah. channels. They want to be on TikTok. They want to like, they, but, but they're not thinking about it. Like when I was a kid and was like, I want to be in a movie and I'm like, I'm going to win an Oscar. Like, they're like, no, I'm going to be on TikTok and I'm going to make like a million dollars. And they, they understand that there's like a realistic potential for them to do that. And they don't seem to have the level of like, fear or there doesn't seem to be anyone knocking them down out of that like it doesn't mm-hmm. feel as unattainable anymore which is really cool to see like I well you think that like these kids grew up with social media yeah. as like the norm for them mm-hmm. right yeah, and yeah. like you know so yeah like that wasn't the case for me like this was as much communication as we had like now <laughs> they're just texting it. each other like all the time <laughs> but right. You know, so if you think about like the world of influencers, right? So like, you know, we, we call ourselves content creators, but like before that was influencers, which mm-hmm. a lot of people think is like a dirty word. But <laughs> when I think of influencers, like I'm like the beauty gals, the fashion gals, like a lot mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. females are yeah. who I mm-hmm. see as influencers. Yeah. I think that their like ability, their gall, right, to be brave enough and put themselves on the internet has now directly influenced the technology that is marketed to content creators because cameras, microphones, all of that stuff used to be marketed to filmmaker boys. (laughs) But now, you know, like I remember like getting cameras and I'm like, why is there not a flip out screen? Like, why can't I like HDMI out on this? Like, you know, things that I'm like, why does this not exist? But now you're starting to see that the different camera companies are, Mm -hmm. are adjusting to that. Yeah. I mean, they're going to go where the, where the money is. Right. And so if, yeah. if women and girls have set themselves up in this kind of in, influential space where they've, they've figured out a way to be influential and build out these amazing, you know, communities and followings, I, the companies are going to make changes to be able to be in that space, which is so fun to watch. Cause I think, you know, for so many years, it's been trying to train girls to be more confident, yeah. to stand up for themselves, to believe in yeah. themselves. And yeah. It's sort of like the the negative side of social media kind of plays into a positive in this one in this one side of it where it's it gives you a Mm -hmm. it gives you a place. I mean, there's still obviously negatives to it, but it gives it gives women and girls a space to be able to um, be themselves and and be authentic and grow and build a community, which is awesome. And that's where, like, the more of us that show up um, online, then then these girls get to see that there's more versions that they can aspire to it's not just one type it's not just what the tv and film industry like deems is like what you should aspire to Mm -hmm. representation matters like if you want to get on here like just do it because there's somebody there's some kid that needs to see you yeah Yeah. that's huge and i think that that was a great impact on on women on social media i'm like i remember Oh my God, when was it? 20, 10 years ago, something like that, 10, 12 years ago, my my photographer when I was living up in Sacramento realized how her daughter was seeing women. And was like that that whole Victoria's Secret look, there is not one gram fat too much on these women. And she's like, I don't want to see women like this. So she started a real women's photo shoot. So we pretty much were in our undies at one point, even on TV. (laughs) But starting that, and it was a big deal at that point. We literally got things, you're not allowed to do this on TV and that. And they, they featured it big on morning TV. And now seeing that that is becoming more of the normal of, hey, most women don't look like that. And by the way, she is only 17 or 18 years old, which is why she mm-hmm. has that body. And it's becoming right. more yeah. normal of, you know what? I'm turning 40 this year. I'm having love handle and a muffin top and it's normal. <laughs> so seeing that change on social media yeah. has been fun. Just seeing mm-hmm. how... The public perception changes from cool you are only getting my perfect arranged charcuterie board and my <laughs> tiny booty in the sun versus we are struggling with something you are not alone in this and just yeah. ch- seeing how everything has changed over the yeah. last few years still mm-hmm. trolls out there don't get me wrong oh, yeah. but at yeah. least it's changing yeah absolutely i we used to, I, I was a hundred percent guilty of that and probably still am to, to some level in that I feel like I, particularly with photos is like, I will, I 
I only share my favorite photos or the best photos or the photos that like, you know, mm -hmm. are like funny or silly or, or are awesome. And I've really been trying to force myself to share the photos of like, my house is a disaster. Like I, you know, my car just broke down. I, like I didn't have the best possible day at work. I, you know, because I, it's those, it's mm -hmm. those photos that end up in meaningful conversations with friends and colleagues where they're like, you know, either in most cases, people offering to help or like, or, you know, or yeah. see themselves in that and want to just chat yeah. with me or reconnect with yeah. me. And it, it's been those moments where I've kind of been like, oh, you know, this like looks a mess and I don't want to show that. And I've had to force myself to do it. But I, video in particular is just such a great way to be able to mm -hmm. do that. And I think in many cases, like platforms, especially like TikTok have made that fun and accessible and, yeah. and yeah. easy where we all kind of see ourselves in, um, in just the chaos of life and are okay with, like, yeah. I'm in my sweatpants and I have a messy bun and I'm on, I'm on the sofa and I'm okay with it. Like, and you should all be okay with it as well. Like I should take time for yourself and, and check out for a little bit or be okay that it wasn't a perfect day. Um, so and I'm it allows you the new normal and yeah. yeah. the new normal is authentic authenticity. authenticity. Yep. Right. Like, and the pandemic made it very, very real very for a real. lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Especially for females. Yeah. You couldn't go yeah. get your hair done no yeah. more. Right. Get nails done. <laughs> Nothing yeah. like that. It was, but, right. but think about it. Right. It's like a lot of people like hid because yeah. mm -hmm. the facade of social media and content has been, you know, you got to look a certain kind of way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the pandemic actually reset that. Yeah. It's like, nah, we just mm -hmm. need you. Right. Mm -hmm. And then of course, as TikTok blew, it's like, hey yo, we can't let these like 17 year olds be this. Right. Stuff. Like, <laughs> right. Like they don't care how they look, what they doing. They are right. just there having fun. They're and just there having fun. We're yeah. like, okay, is this right? Are we doing this correctly? What is this like? Oh my God, right. what are people going to think about me? Why do they like, hold on. Hold, hold, right. Hold. Yeah. Hold. Okay. All right. Hi. No, nope, that, that wasn't story. it. Record. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah. that right. over. Hit again. Like, start again. Right. But yet they just busted out 15 videos. Mm -hmm. And so it's really just the, the new normal is just being ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the fa as like women in tech and just influencers or creators in, in totality, in general, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a responsibility to continue to show up as ourselves yeah. Yeah. because yeah. there are not just our generation, but multiple generations that are looking at us and it's like, yeah. I can do this. Mm -hmm. This is possible. People who are older mm -hmm. and people who are younger people who are same age that are like, okay, you came with cold in your eye and you had cold right. in your eye the whole right. time. You just kept right. going. Like, right. I need that confidence. It's not even like I need yeah. to do the same. I just need that confidence and continue to yeah. do it. And by just the presence of that, they'll show up actually almost the same amount or more than you because you gave them that confidence. Yeah. And that's why I love live stream. And I think that's like a big like switch for a lot of people because like, you know, before live streaming was available, we have to record it and then you have to look at yeah. it before you post it. Right. right? Yeah. But now it's yeah. like you just live. I like I like I don't even look at it again. I'm like, I messed up. Yeah. All right. It's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, it's already out that. there. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. already yeah. out there. The worst part's over. And yeah. you have you have a, che a cheerleaders in your right. um, yeah. in your yeah. pocket, right? I mean, the one thing that really yeah. got me past all of that was that the Ecamm fam showed up. They sat in the comments right. and they were like, yep. you're amazing, we love seeing you. Right. No idea if that was accurate. Maybe some of it, maybe not all of it. But they were th they were there and it made me feel better and it gave me a higher level of confidence. And then when it when you made those mistakes, you're like, all right, there was probably you know people there that weren't as encouraging or that you know pointed out things right. that went wrong. But having like a couple of friends or community yeah. members or people, I mean, family, literally anyone that you can have that can be there yeah. to encourage you uh, is huge. I think it just made all the yeah. difference in being like, oh, I got this. It's fine. It, it's not the, it's not the end of the yeah. world. I can get through it. I love I love all of these. Speaking of amazing comments, I love it. We're definitely overthinking the overthinking right. the process. We are a hundred percent overthinking the process. Mm -hmm. I keep wanting to release I did 
um, every time that typically it's it's shout out to Mike at Agora Pulse. He's always like wonderful at, at wanting me to speak at these virtual events that they put on. And in many cases, they're like recorded videos. And I'm always like, I got this. Yes, 100 percent. And then I have probably a day of just like freaking out that I should just do like yeah. a vlog, like a day in the life of Katie yeah. panicking about a conference that's coming up yeah. where I shoot the same video. 150 like I'm like yeah. just the intro I'm I literally can't yeah. say hi I'm right. Katie Fox and I work at Ecamm can't like yeah. I'm mm -hmm. like hi I'm Katie and I and then I'm like nope and I delete it Start again it's the next one and then I'm like hey it's K nope I delete it the next one <laughs> yeah. it's just me like Change sitting there, hitting time. my head no, this is Katie nope 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 that wasn't <laughs> it and I'm like oh I had so something sweet. in my hair no I can't do that I have to delete that one I'm like yeah it's it's ridiculous and yeah. And I know the content. By the time I'm done the video, I have the whole thing memorized because I've said it so many times right. in trying yeah. to make the like 20 minute video that really wasn't that big of a deal. Had I been doing it live, I'd probably it would have been fine. But yeah. I, in the future, I should just do them live. And then at least the at least you start recording and do that multiple times. I spend five days with the <laughs> I should record it, but I don't want to, but I need to get ready oh. and I should record. It's like, seriously, Evie, are you kidding me? You've been recording videos for how long yet every single time? I'm like, can we just do this live? Just hit, yeah. the, hit the play button and we'll just do it live. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. live was an unlock. It really was. And it was funny because I feel like it's the thing that people are the most scared about like from a technology standpoint. It's one of those things yeah. that we, we recently have been working with a... Um, a UX designer to help kind of walk through like what the app looks like and the process. And so he's been sending us all these screenshots and he had one of them where he was walking through like first run, never tried Ecamm before. And he got to, he like gave, sent us a screenshot with like an arrow down to the live button. And he said, this feels like a nuclear code button. What happens when I push that? Do I actually go live? Like it feels terrifying. Like it was like all these words all over. It was like terrifying what yeah what is this scary like circle <laughs> like need a yeah. little help here need a little and oh, poor baby it is right it feel like it it can feel that way so yeah it's, it's terrifying but it will is, free you will exactly free, yeah. that's yeah. the nice thing about it because there is no overthinking there is no editing three times mm -hmm. and then not publishing it because it's just not perfect yeah it's yeah. just hit that button and just go live and be done with it. And next time yeah. you are 1% better. And then next time you are 1% yeah. better. It's like the moment you actually hit that button, life is just easy. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's so funny. So that's exactly how I did my very first live stream into the Ecamm fam community. Um, and so I was doing a video. And I had gotten this Lewitt mic, and everyone loves how sultry and sexy my voice sounds with Amen. this microphone. This is a fact. This, this is, is a fact. fact. <laughs> <laughs> Drop and your so affiliate link right in here. Let's monetize this. Right. If you want to sound like her. <laughs> <laughs> Women don't I was, ask for enough. This I was doing time. a comparison. I had just picked up just the like MB7. Women in and tech. So <laughs> click the link below. <laughs> Listen, listen, I can do voiceovers, whatever you guys listen. Oh, my girlfriend, you, you, you just highlighted Angie's comment. Let me chill because Angie's exactly Angie just popped up in the comments. Let me behave. Hold on. Hey. <laughs> but seriously, I was recording a video uh, comparing the Lewitt microphone to the MV7, and I did the freaking start and stop 20,000 times. And I was going to edit it, and I was like, you know what? Um, how about I just go live into, into the Ecamm community? First of all, it was my first live stream. That live stream lasted three whole hours. It was- Why am I not surprised? You're like, I gotta go. No, and everyone's hours. like, nope, we have more questions. <laughs> it was You're gonna literally, right here. Literally, it was, and so it was Bradley Vincent, Lemuel who came in, um, yeah. Anslam, Doc showed up. It was <laughs> insane. And then Doc showed up. Look, she's laughing at me. Yeah. Doc showed up and Doc was like, okay, so when you're done with that live stream, come to my live stream. And literally <laughs> I ended one, went my first day live, but I didn't have to think about it. Like the amount of times in 15 minutes where I stopped records. And then I was like, you know what? F this and I just went live and then that's all she wrote I have more lives than what I have recorded videos because it's so much easier yeah. and the community right the level of engagement and the community I thrive mm -hmm. off of yeah. that I thrive exactly. off of that it's, it's, live engagement yeah like forget about a recorded I mean, 
but there's nothing right like i want to talk to you guys i want to bring your comments on screen and make you guys laugh yeah That's exactly what I you're like am i funny i can't tell the right. camera's not laughing i don't know I can't. Yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly Oh, I absolutely love it. I, these, yeah. these, um, I obsess about my video invitations. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like it, it just, yeah. I'm like, nope. <laughs> right. It's right. so, yeah, it's so true. It's, it's funny. I, I would, I would argue uh, that this is like live streaming, probably pretty perfect for 98% of women out there where we're yeah. all like overthinking it way too yeah. much, way, way too in the kind of perfection zone. We have this imposter syndrome and I, you know, Hey, April is coming up. You have like Lita Vita. We're doing Sita. Yeah. Like literally you could spend every day for the month of April, forcing yourself to create something, forcing yourself to go into video, forcing yourself to be in technology. <laughs> it's a good you opportunity go just for it. As crazy as India. How many days are you in now? Yeah, of India is like 26. Today, I don't know. So oh, today was day. Yeah, today was 20. So 24. Because ah, I go. have 76 more days. So today, today was 24. And so it's so funny because I woke up. I went to sleep at 2 o'clock in the morning last night. Finishing my master class. Um, mm -hmm. Was entirely late for every single <laughs> bank customer call. I'm not even kidding. I was like three hours behind for every bank customer appointment. And I'm just sending out random text messages. Hey, my previous appointment is running late. Can I push it back? And thank God all the customers today were great. You're like every traffic. Am I back. right? I've just been driving. Was, exactly. <laughs> it was so bad. Paul texted me because I was supposed to go live at one o'clock. I was on the phone with a client at 106. And Paul was like, India, we're waiting for you. I said, what? I didn't even realize the time. I'm not even kidding. I was like, oh my God, I'm on the phone with a client. Thank God we were wrapping up. And, you know, like, it's like doing all of those things. But what that has teached me is that one, I waste way more time than what I really realized. Evie is an efficiency consultant, just saying. Listen, she, the, the amount of times that Evie has yelled at me, I, we're not, no, please don't give her more fire. Um, I, I at I least wish. didn't yell at you this morning. No, but we need to get you coffee, other women Ivy. right here. We need Evie's to get you a coffee, you. Ivy. <laughs> right, right. But it, I, I, it, it, and going back to some of the stuff that you said, right, with just double thinking and deleting and starting again i realized that last night as i finished my master class i recorded like my psychopathic self i recorded 24 classes in two days mm -hmm. mind you exactly because i'm a psychopath <laughs> yeah. mind mm -hmm. you i've had because i'm crazy nikki that's there, there, there's no other thing <laughs> He's like, oh, we know that <laughs> because i, I so i've I had access <laughs> Yes. Well, now, you know, I've had access to Kajabi since February 22nd and I've been overthinking it. Like, let's yeah. be real. I've been overthinking and I'm like, I don't know how to do this or how is this going to look or looking at other people's websites? Shame on me. Who the hell told us no, to compare no. ourselves to everyone else? Why? Mm -hmm. Then finally, I literally I like, have to go ahead. Yeah. I literally have to schedule my research when I'm figuring yeah. out what I'm going yeah. to be talking about, doing That's my smart. keyword research. I literally have to block that on one yep. day. Yep. Just smart. get it over with, feel sorry yep. for myself at the end of the day and be okay tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Just because of that. I'm like, yeah. Yep. But that's what happened. So I kept like, what is it like when you dibble? Like, okay, I'm going to just do this little section of my master class. And then I'm going to, and then finally I knew, and I knew I wanted to talk about it tonight. So that was the deadline. I said, all right, get your ass in here. You're welcome. <laughs> right. Thank you. No, thank you. Really. Thank you. And then Paul. And so then I recorded all the lessons from Sunday night to yesterday night, 24 classes. And when I was done at 12, 11 this morning, I was like, why? I've had a whole month to do this. Like, why? And I have no idea why, except for that I was in my head because I'm like, I need these to be perfect. And really they didn't need to be perfect. So we need to mm. do better. So what you're saying is we need to go through your decision-making strategy and figure out what the trigger is to get you done <laughs> mm. earlier next time. Oh, wait, first of all, you have to speed past that. Like you didn't just say what you just said. <laughs> hey, I'm guilty of it as anybody else. Don't give me one. I am just as guilty. Yeah, no, I, I mean, safety in numbers, though, I, I will mm -hmm. say that it makes a big difference. If you're sitting out there and you're like, I, I have all of these things and, you know, I'm trying to push through to get 
past this and I'm multitasking yeah. and juggling 45 different things because that's what all of us women do is <laughs> juggle mm-hmm. all of the different things at once yeah. and multitask. It, it made a huge difference to me to have a group of go-to people who are, yeah. you know, mentors, colleagues, friends that I've collected over the years who, you know, have yeah. their own little groups of people that when I'm like feeling, you know, totally out of my league or I'm like, wow, I really should know how to do Google ads by now. <laughs> really should be good at that, but I'm not. So, you know, someone, someone that I, you know, that you can call or like, I have now spent, you know, two hours looking at this one new piece of software and I'm like, I don't know if I should know this or if they, I mean, the one thing I will say about technology right now is that it's non-stop. It's, it's changing right. all the time that it's not, it's not reasonable yeah. for all of us to keep up with all of it. it. There, there is, you know, everyone is is has a specialty or a skill set or a passion for something. I mean, I don't, I don't pretend to know anything about TikTok right. other than I watch Mary Lou a lot on TikTok, and right. I'm like, right. I'm like right. taking notes about like one of these days I'm gonna start my yeah. TikTok. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna get really good at this. Legit, but, you know. <clears throat> but I know that I could reach out to Mary Lou and ask her, and she mm-hmm. would answer me. Maybe, maybe she knows. Yeah. Just kidding. She would answer me. I, I would, would definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think there's uh, I think there's a safety in, in being able to have other people and it's okay to reach out and ask for help. I think we're all, I don't know, maybe I'm mass generalizing, but I, I am definitely guilty of like, they'll think I'm stupid if I don't, if I admit mm-hmm. that I don't know how to do this one tiny aspect of the like huge amount of stuff that I'm doing yeah. on a regular basis. It's like the one thing. Oh yeah, I had to let that go at. last year. I had to let that go. Mm called pride and I'm Puerto Rican so I have a lot of it so I had to I had to let that go and yep. try and let my half black side to but we have pride over there too so it's just it's, it's, it's all You're messed like, up these it's, little bits of me is gonna set that right. yeah, really messed up. And, I, and I'm a Leo so it's like okay you just, you're all just together yeah, yeah it's all bad it's just right yeah oh <laughs> yeah. my gosh but I, everything can be learned. Yeah, everything like, can be learned. Right. Yep. You just need to know what you need to know. And, you know, like we didn't know how to do every, we didn't know how to walk when we didn't know how to walk. Mm-hmm. We didn't know how to drive. Right. And then we knew I how to drive. I remember when I didn't know how to walk. I don't remember that. <laughs> you know, like, right. <laughs> I was born walking. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely I don't remember no when I don't know what Now, now the driving, I am. But the yeah, the driving, I, I remember. I remember that. <laughs> I definitely remember that. It's so true, yeah. though. Yeah, we're like, yeah. we learned all those things. We had to, right? There was like, yeah. And, and yeah, I think it, I think that that makes a ton of sense whether there's something that's pushing you or something that really, you know, makes a big difference, you'll learn it. Right. So I think we, if we can find ways to challenge each other and to challenge ourselves right. to take those steps, you'll, you'll learn it. You'll learn it. If you need to, you'll yeah. ask for help. Yes. You'll kind of put that aside. Um, <laughs> there you go. I didn't know how to use rebrandly until India did a live stream about it. See, there you go. Mm. Zero shame. Zero shame. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think for us you- as Go ahead, Mary Lou. Like as soon as you no. accept that, uh, you know, when you learn something, it's already changed. Yeah. You know, yeah. so just don't like hold yeah. on to it so tightly. As, as soon as you learn it, it's already different. Yeah. So you, and if you accept that, and that's not you, that's not your deficiency. That's just mm-hmm. the, the speed that technology changes. Then you know it it can help the blow a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I think that making yourself vulnerable and as women, I think people just don't do that in general, but I think like for us as a community, making yourself vulnerable and putting yourself out there is huge. And then tying that in with your community, right? So it's like, so it's like Mm -hmm. imposter syndrome, being vulnerable in community. So when you think about those things where it's like, okay, let me make myself, and I have a close knit community. Like I, I FaceTime Evie this morning. I said, I didn't even finish my first cup of coffee. I'm like, I'm so tired. Oh my God, help me. Like, I'm so hell? tired. I have thoughts. Okay? <laughs> like, just, yeah. But, but making myself vulnerable to the close circle of community that I have, even with you, Katie, right? Like there was at one point last year, I'm like, listen, I'm going through this. I don't know what's happening. I'm living with my brother. And leaning with you guys, Mm -hmm. leaning on you guys to hold me accountable, Mm -hmm. but letting myself be vulnerable, I think has put me in the space that I'm in now. Because instead of having that, I can do it all. I'm a strong woman. I got this. I mean, I am all of those things. But I'm not always all all the time. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Not all the time. And recognizing that and being honest with the community and then saying, I need help. And like, 
or listen, I need you guys to hold me accountable to that. So then you have like a Paul texting me and Evie texting me like, so how many classes did you record today? And I'm like, um, so let's one? change the subject. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but allowing yourself to be vulnerable is huge. Go ahead, Evie. It's, it's also the other side where your community, our community wants to be there. Yes. If you are not, I had yes. one Sunday. Yeah, I think it was Sunday. I never left the yeah. couch or Saturday. I never left the couch. I had one of those days where I'm like, why am I doing this? Why am I here? What the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. And I took this... I'm one, this usually stays in my closet. I'm not talking about this. Germans don't. Yeah. We're like British. Germans are like British. We don't talk about this stuff. And I'm like, no. So I literally just took a picture of me on the couch saying some of those days you just got to listen to your body and just stay on the couch all day. And my community reached yeah. out to me and checked in on me. They, You are robbing them of that possibility to feel needed, to feel mm -hmm. helpful mm -hmm. if you are not sharing that. Mm -hmm. As well as yeah. I'm reaching out to, to some of my people when I get into one of those days where I'm like, okay, so um, can we do the Evie is awesome call? I am down. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. Just let me, yeah. please tell me how awesome yeah. I am. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. because yeah. we, deep down we know it when these days comes we know what we have accomplished yeah. damn yeah. i moved into a whole nother country with two bags and a suitcase yeah we you rock all a girl yeah, yeah. we've yeah. done something yet there are yeah. days where where we are questioning things so go grab a couple of your gals and really yeah. just be like okay so um can you please repeat my eb is awesome folder to me so i remember how good i am i was gonna say you need you need the folder right brian, brian fanzo god bless you brian fanzo i when i when we first did leap into live streaming the first year it was like just crazy we had an outstanding like just way more attendees than we thought we would. The whole thing was going super, super well, but there was one little blip and one little thing that went wrong and I was beating up on myself and thinking like, oh, why didn't I, why didn't I think about that? Why didn't I plan that out? And, and feeling just super low. And instead of, instead of emailing or texting me and saying, you know, like, you know, you've got this, you're awesome. You know, that he was like, do you have an awesomeness folder? And I was like, I don't know what that means. Right. And he was like, you need an awesomeness folder on your computer somewhere. Every time someone yeah. says anything nice about you, anytime that you post something and it gets mm -hmm. like tons of likes, any like personal or professional, anytime something mm -hmm. wins and you can grab a screenshot of that, you can take a picture of it, you throw that in the folder. And then when you're feeling like you are right now, you spend 20 minutes and you go back through that and you remind yourself mm -hmm. of all the things that you did that had an impact on someone, that made a difference, that made you feel great. And I, I had like... Every time, like we, we, you know, every time we change computers, every time I like the first thing I slide over, I'm like, awesomeness folder, next <laughs> thing to do. Like that's my, my go-to yeah. and it's so simple, but it made such a big difference because it wasn't, it wasn't just someone saying to me that I was doing a good job. It was me from the past showing myself that I'm capable of doing a good mm -hmm. job and it made a big difference in my world. So yeah, if you don't have an awesomeness, well, everyone needs an awesomeness folder. I like that. Wherever you want to have it, shout out to Brian Fanta yep. for creating nope. that or thinking that through. But um, my folder's called for when you forget who you are. Oh, there you go. I love, I love that. that. Mm. You know, so, like, it's like a longer title, but it's like when you forget who you are, like open it, like breaking case of emergency. Yeah. Breaking right? case yeah. of emergency. Exactly. Like exactly. Oh my god. Yeah, but if you guys like, like I, I, I know like all of us, like we, you know, we've shared how we, are, we, we feel down and we feel like we're not in the right place. We're not doing the right thing where we need like the awesomeness folder. Like mm -hmm. I, if, if you guys in the chat, I implore you, like, if you felt this, just tell us because I'm telling you it's everyone. Yeah, it's everyone. Yeah. It's everyone yep. has done it. And so like I just did a, a TikTok recently about like my quarterly existential crisis where I'm like, <laughs> am I doing the right thing with my <laughs> life or not? And, Only you know, quarterly? Just, right, I was going to say, yeah, like, quarterly schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget on that schedule. It lasts for a while, but, you know, like it's like <laughs> quarterly when I acknowledge it and I'm not just mm -hmm. trying to like hide underneath the covers. But mm -hmm. people were like, saying like yes me too like it that they relate to this yeah it's all of us yeah and but yeah but you're all mm -hmm. awesome but like share that when it happens because then like maybe i wouldn't be scared to say it was only quarterly maybe i could say it was weekly if i knew more people were feeling it too right yeah mm -hmm. 
right? Yeah. Girl, I literally, I literally got this done oh, just yes. to remind me it. every time I look in the mirror. I love it. That whole mirror training of, yeah, you actually know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, as I say on my live from the test studio show, We've done it. We've wasted another perfectly good hour <laughs> hanging out together, <laughs> but it has been absolutely incredible. It looks like people are jumping off for their shows. So I want to be sensitive of time, but thank you so much for you all for spending time and sharing your stories. And I just, I'm, I'm honored that you are all in my community. I just, I find it absolutely incredible. The people that I've had the privilege of being able to talk with and you are all both in the chat and here on video, the people that I'm like, I don't know how to do this, or I feel less than, or I'm out of my league, or someone else would do this job better. It's, um, it's all of the comments and the encouraging notes back and forth and the cheerleaders yeah. Um, yeah. in the live streams and in the community and in the DMs that make a big difference. So if you're if you're out there and you're thinking that you're just kind of watching from the shadows or you haven't got there yet, you can do it. If you need someone yeah. to cheer you on, we're all right here. We're happy to cheer you on. There is no it, better uh, community to cheer you on. There is no better yeah. community to cheer you on. Thanks. And especially as women and especially as women in tech, which we now all have discovered that right. we are, we, we are here to support each other. And there are some incredible women out there. There are some amazing men out there who are dedicated to making a difference as well. So it's, um, I think those stats are are hopefully on the way out or up as more and more of us realize that we can do it. And that we like a thought on the on the statistics though is that there's so many of us that just don't think that we are that title. Yeah, but they are. Mm-hmm. You know, they mm-hmm. are there. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely true. I, you're right. I think it is a wider a wider title Spectrum. than we thought. Yeah. yeah, a bigger a bigger group of us. Yeah. All right. So I'm just gonna double all those stats and then we're good. Right. We've solved this. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> See you later, March. We've got this. We're heading into April. That's so funny. <laughs> Next challenge. <laughs> Thank you so much to all of you for hanging out. Thank you to all of you in the comments. And hopefully you'll participate in one of the April challenges. Pick your challenge. There's lots of them. But the goal is make something every single day. That's it. Do something. Yeah. Try something. Make a photo, a video. Open up that TikTok account you've been thinking about. I'll follow you. I spend like two hours a day looking at TikTok videos. (laughs) Not creating a lot of them yet, but I'm watching a lot of them. (laughs) Thanks, everyone. We'll talk soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.